Aloha, Richard Halverson here. This is ITS 387T, and uh, it is February 25th today, spring uh, uh, 2021, and uh, we're uh, in we're doing video six number six today. And so let me um, let's see. Let me share my screen. To Okay, so uh, so here's where we are. Uh, this is the student version, or this is my this is my version to see how to see what you guys see, hopefully. And we are uh, like we are starting chapter six. Oh, we're not. Wait a second. Yes, we are. If we look at the last video, let's just take a look and make sure we know where we are. So I don't want to miss it. Uh, let me go back to send data to the server. Oops. And then we're going to start with I'm using JavaScript coding where we're actually be coding. Um, here's some. Oh, 515. You, you guys have all been doing, doing pretty well. Okay, good. Music, so if you'd like me to go over one of these. All right, so so we're going to start chapter six today, and uh, one thing I I I made a note for myself uh, to set up the auto grader for your assignments. There's actually an auto grader that you can use to test to test to see if you've got your assignment correctly correct, and it tells you it tells you if you didn't. So then you can uh, so I'll I got to set that up. It's it's a trimmed down version of something I use for another class. So it's, it's, um, so it's already done. I just have to take out a bunch of stuff. All right, so uh, if we go to the textbook, let's see, I don't need to have, well, I'm gonna use this later, so. So let's go to the textbook. We're in chapter six now, last, um last week we covered all of the basics of javascript just just as a language itself and we see that it's you know it's different than than um uh it's it's different than python it's it's closer to php uh but uh it's you know it's its own language to objects and everything and now we're going to learn about how it interfaces with the browser so you know you have this document that's got a bunch of elements on it, and it, and an element can be an HTML tag that that uh, that makes makes a string of text bold, you know, or two elements enclosed in a in an object, and um, uh, as an object. And uh, there's a way that, as you know from 227, you can um, access each each one of those objects, and you can see what it is, and you can change them. You can make decisions with your JavaScript, and then you can change them and write them out back out to that particular object on on the document. And so, uh, you're, you can actually change, you know, what's going on on the screen um, without having to go back to the server. So, um, so it's all about naming conventions and how we how we you know reference or refer to each of these objects. So uh, JavaScript can execute in response to user interactions and alter the contents of a web page. So you know, clicking on a button can change stuff. But there's something. It, it's the document object model is the data it is a data structure which represents all the all parts of an HTML component. Uh, and so there's a, a JavaScript object called document. And then there's a bunch of uh, you know properties, and the properties are all the, all the things that are on on the web page. So re this represents the entire document object model. Yeah, model is kind of a, a I would rather have it be called document object structure or something like that. It's not a model is to me model is something more general. But anyway, it's called DOM. And uh, changes to the document are reflected in the browser uh, presentation. You know, you know, um, at the time they're made. So, so you know, you can stuff can really be moving around on the um, 
on the in, in the browser window of as your program is as your JavaScript JavaScript programming is executed. And of course, uh, JavaScript is enclosed in the script in the script uh, you know slash script tags, um, and they execute. Um, the script executes when the page is loaded, but then there's other script that are just methods that would execute when the methods are invoked, and those methods being invoked would be some some user uh, action, some something that happens event that happens on the screen, like, like like pressing a button or even hovering over a particular section of text. As you know, <clears throat> there's this um, there uh, the right uh, document right line method. Um, outputs HTML uh, into the document and alters the document object model. So, so when you um, so the JavaScript can change the uh, the structure, can change the document object model by uh, using the write line in it. You know, it can write write new objects onto the onto the screen or or, or change object, objects. So, so here's an example of where. Uh, so you know there's this document and uh there's this is there and then there's some script right underneath the h1 there's some script here and and the script does does some stuff does some javascript stuff but then it, it, it uh, but then it has a right line and uh the right line um uh well, just writes this out but then it also writes out uh, an element of this responses array, or if you want to, Python would call it a list. Uh, so, so there's three of them indexed zero, one, and two. And this thing, um, you know, grabs a random number. Um, okay, so the way this math random object works is um, this is a this will will give us will give you a random number uh, between um, zero and one a random a random you know floating point number between zero and one and then this here multiplies that random number by zero one two okay no by three by three the length of this is three. There's three elements in this array. And so this is going to be a number between, um, well, this is going to be three. And so, so this takes that random number between zero and one and multiplies it by three. So, so it's going to be, so it's going to end up being a random number between uh, zero and three, um, except for it won't be three because this will never be really, this will never be one. It'll, it'll be cl as close to one. It's close to one, but it but it'll never be one. So if you take the floor of it, it's going to be this. This is going to be end up being zero, one, or two, and so that's so it's an index into this array here. And so when we render the page, in other words, when this thing you know is displayed, it's going to pick one of these responses based on the based on the random number. Show that more. <coughs> before I started. All right, so so we can render the page and we notice each one of these changes, it's going to be one of these one of these things random. So anyway, um, and and it, you you see that and so so um, it's going to be like if this is between zero and 0.333, then it's going to be this one, or if this is between 0.33334 and and 0.6666 it's going to be this one and above this point you know it's going to be this one so you can see that when we render this since it's only three that sometimes you know you'll get you'll get sequences where it's the same see here without a doubt was two or three ask ask again later looks like it was more than that all right and this tests your understanding of this up here uh the document object model is created from a document's html hmm. um
and is created from the document's HTML. Okay, so that would be true. And a document is accessible oh. via the global object and document. Yeah, that's what it is, I believe. And then uh, this adds a div. Okay, so this is how you might add a div element to a to uh, to the document. So I believe this is true. Yes, it is. Okay, so uh, now you know we should have started talking about window first because really the whole outside object is a window. There's a window object, and that's actually the entire browser window. You know, tabs included. A document is not is the doc document is on is one tab okay so it's you know it's the screen you know at the document but above that is is window so window there's the window object and then window dot document of course is, is the document object in a tabbed browser each tab has a oh wait I, what i said was wrong so it represents an open a window oh Oh, a document is a property of of window. Okay, so I was thinking that the that the uh, document or that the window included the tabs, but the window does not include the tabs. But still, the document is an object of, of the window and is accessed this way. Uh, it turns out that there's this thing where um, you don't have the you know declaring or um, if you're well, it turns out that you don't need to put the window doc. It assume, it always assumes uh, window dot something. So um, that's why in JavaScript you never see, you rarely see that. Uh, well, sometimes you do, but so um, so these are some properties. There's a lo the location property, and that uh, contains information about the window's current URL. Uh, and in fact, if you want to. If you want to, uh, yeah, and if you want to jump to another URL, you can you can write to this this property. Uh, Navigator is an object that contains information about the browser. So uh, um, this is a property. You know, this is the window. This is the an object, and this is a property that that returns the the type of browser it is. And this is how you can tell. This is so, usually how you can tell what kind of machine um, you're on, also because the the browser. Uh, you, uh, user agent information should often tells you that you, you, you have to be clever about figuring it out. So, um, so this looks like it's on a Windows NT machine, or no, no, a Windows machine. Uh, okay, it's a Chrome browser. Uh, this is actually a sort of a standard. This is sort of a, this just means windows, but it's not really an NT. It's, and then this is a, this is something that's added that you can add to the browser, which <coughs> helps you do a bunch of stuff, gives you a bunch of uh, classes to help you make animated objects and so on, I think. Um, so which, okay, so now this is where I started when I was doing this earlier, a windows, the windows object property, which one is useful for determining if the web page is loaded using HTTP or HTTPS? Okay, and so which object is it? Both of these are objects of. They're both, um, um, you know, objects, objects of the Windows object, and so uh, and. The answer is not up here. So, um, you know, you, you can just click there. But what I did was I searched for location. By the way, a lot of this stuff is, is new to me. I use a little bit of all this stuff and I have for, you know, long time. But, but this is the first time that I've actually gone and studied all the features of the methods and properties of the uh, of all these objects and so to answer these questions I actually went and looked up the location object and so so the question is the question I was trying to answer is where was I? Uh, it was a oh this here so um, useful for determining HTTPS or HTTP so if we go to Let's look at location. Turns out I think location is the answer. 
um, we have uh, the protocol is actually HTTP or HTTPS. So, so first I searched on, on uh, you know, Windows HT, HTML DOM window properties and methods. And so, um, but the, uh, so the protocol, but it still was, you're still not clear what exactly protocol means, although I don't know what it means, but uh, so, so I, I, I actually searched further and I found um, this is, this is the mozilla.org developer. Now this is like the first documentation of, of JavaScript. You know, Mozilla is, you know, the old Netscape and uh, they're the ones that, that started back in 1996, they, they started all this. So, but um, uh, the, the DIR object, oh no, this is for the DIR object. Where was the console object? This is, here we go, in here. Um, so the protocol prints the protocol like H HTTP or HTTPS. So anyway, so so we have the answer to our, to our question here. Um, this one, location. And then which which object property likely produces this output? Well, this is a, this is a description, uh, you know, this is the user agent, so it's this one. And then which window method is ideal for displaying the pop-up advertisement? Well, you know, alert just pop, well, uh, alert just pops up a message. It, it just pops up a text message. Whereas as open as you know from up here, oh, did we go through? I don't think we, we went through this example where um, uh, the confirm method asks the, okay, so, so we're gonna use this confirm method and then we're going to demonstrate this open method okay so what this javascript does is it's a pop-up demo looks like this and then um, it's going to ask it's it's, it's going to ask you oh, okay it wants you to do this it wants you to copy this and paste it here paste Okay, so it asks you, would you like to see a pop-up window? And it's gonna return a true or false. And so if it's true, it's gonna do this. Yes, if you say yes, you, it, it'll, it'll pop up this window. And the window is gonna be 250 by 100, 100 high, 250 wide. And it's gonna say this in it. Because in my, um, my window is the name of a new window, open a new window, I'm calling it my window, and this, this is a window, it's the window dot document dot write. So this is gonna write it. And so when we see what it looks like, render the page, we see this thing pops up and you know, would you like to see a pop-up window? Yeah, okay. And here's the pop-up window, see. Isn't that nice? So um, I think, you, you know, it's one of the, it says an embedded page on uh, an embedded page on this page said, let me see if I, what happens if I do something like this? Does this do anything? No, it doesn't do anything. No, this is not doing anything. Okay, anyway. All right, um, so which one? Okay, so now you know that, that, that it's open, not alert. All right, um, so there's also this console and the console is, 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 is very useful. It's like, you know, I, I mean, people try to write JavaScript without using the console and they're just like guessing, they're just taking shots in the dark. So to find your console, Depending on, on what browser you're on, this tells you how to do it for Netscape or for a Chrome, but there's a, but people use other browsers. Uh, so you go tools, let's see, clear browser data, developer tools, console. 
there we go. Where's the console? I have mine up here. I guess I can put it, I think I can pop it out if I wanted to. I can put it down across here. Now let's see where it would be on in Firefox. It would be web developer, web console. Ah, okay, down here. All right, so anyway. <clears throat> I guess I don't really need this here. So um, most modern browsers provide a console that allows JavaScript to produce code. Now let's see if I can, what, what happens? I'm curious about this, um, about this uh, developer tools. Console. <coughs> um, the way you write to the console is you do this. No, 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 that's not right. The way you do it is you do this. Uh, this is this this will write. I guess you write to the log. Okay, so console dot log. What happens if I go console dot log? Hello world. I don't think it liked it. Okay, did I do something else? I'm gonna get rid of this first. Oh, I must have some other error. Oh, I screwed up here. I know I'm wasting the time. Oh, this works. Uh, great. Now what happens if I put this back in? Does this work? It's, it, it should pop up after this is done. Oh, look, it did. Hello world. Well, that's pretty clever. Okay, so it is real. Okay, so, um, and this is how you can get to the console more fast. When a syntax error is present in JavaScript, in JavaScript code or a runtime error occurs, the only place you're gonna see it is in the console. Um, Otherwise, it just won't work. You know, otherwise your JavaScript just won't work. So, you know, oftentimes when I'm writing JavaScript, I won't I won't remember to open up the console because I don't maybe I don't think I'm writing anything very big or I don't think I need it. And then once my JavaScript doesn't work, then I open up the console and my error is there and I'm able to fix it, fix it up that way. <clears throat> so here, here's an example of where the the you know, case matters. So the person accidentally wrote this. Now let's see what happens if I, I'm just gonna test this. What happens if I go like this? That worked. Wait a second. It shouldn't have worked. Should it have? Oh, no, no, never mind. This is what didn't work. So this doesn't work. It just doesn't work. This right line just didn't work. But over here is where I see that it says, uh, my window this is not a function. Now this line number is who knows, this is down somewhere because this actually is inside embedded in this book here. But. All right, um, so that's an example of that error. Okay, so, so there are some useful methods here uh, that available with the console object. And uh, we've seen this one, but there's also warn and there's error and there's DIR. Uh, DIR actually displays out the whole structure. Um, error displays errors to the console. Okay, so, so if you're curious about all the other methods that are available, This one, no still. The console object, there's error. I said error, I said uh, 
log warn but no dir so you got to search more and here's where we developer mozilla here's where i found the dir by the way they capitalize this they shouldn't probably won't work um so he what so basically the dir displays out this whole big um, structure displays out the structure of, of whatever the object is a bunch of stuff here all right so uh so here's a log and a log and you can um so here we're printing out um okay do we talk about get element by yet i don't know if we do but um if you want to access well this is how you access elements on you know in the window and this is this is accessing them by tag name um the one I'm that one that you're most familiar with is get element by ID and every element has you know you you would assign every element a unique ID and then your code can just go and access that element and you can if it's a radio button you can see if it's checked or not if it's a checkbox or if it's a text box you can see what's in what the user entered into the text box you can write stuff into a text box and so on uh, here's get element by tag name and so so if there's more oh, oh the first one so I, I was going to say that if there's more than one then this is going to return an array a list and but by doing this you're just going to get the first one regardless and so this you see it displays uh where's the we we don't see the code is actually down here Just the code. Ah, I must be thinking of some some other code. Okay. Um, all right. So here, what is this now? Match the console method with the best use for that method. Okay. So I this was a tough one for me. I warning would would be um, okay. I, I do. Display the structured JavaScript object. Okay, I know that's DIR. And then helping to term, determine why an algorithm isn't working as expected. Hmm. Report unexpected problems. Checking the assumptions are correct. I don't know this one. Oops, no. Okay, now let's let's look at, at what what they say are the reasons. Determine why an algorithm isn't working as expected. Uh, oh, okay. What did I? Oh, did I? I guess that's what I should have put. Uh, warning: Sometimes a developer may assume a variable has a certain value. Uh, the console warn method can can be placed in strategic places in the code to indicate when those assumptions are not true. Okay, so I've never used this warn method. That that's, looks like an interesting method. Warn. So you must be able to put a condition. All right, well, that's interesting. Is you're just writing out stuff. I don't see why. What's the difference difference between warn and uh, log? Well, anyway, um, seems like a difference. Uh, what time is it? It's not. Um, <clears throat> HTML, DOM difference between console warn and console log. Oh, 
Yeah. Okay. So that's what I know. Oh, it's a different color. Display is different. Log is black. Worn is yellow. You know, what if I'm colorblind? I'm not colorblind, but I know a lot of colorblind people. And they, they would look at that and go, God, colorist. All right. Uh, so as, as you know, from, from uh, 227, I'm sure uh, you can load JavaScript from an external file. You load Bootstrap and that's how you load jQuery and all that probably, right? Uh, from an external file, you do something like this. Uh, this would be an, an external file on the same server, but you can put a whole HTTP S colon slash slash blah, blah, blah in there. So uh, where's the JavaScript? A common error when loading an external JavaScript file is to put the closing script. Oh, you need to put the closing script. Oh, okay or trying to use a self-closing. I guess you can't do that either. Uh, modern browsers require the closing script. What am I supposed to see out of this one? Okay. Yeah, okay, and it grabs, request that, get that. Uh, there it is, oh, okay, that's what the JavaScript file does. Now, Oh, okay, because it's going to execute it right there. And so that thing kind of pops up. And um, then that's going to execute. And then the dog's going to show up. And then some more text. And then we're done. This test your understanding of what just happened. Loading JavaScript with async or defer. Now this is new. Although the script tag uh, can be included anywhere, it's good practice to include it in the head with an async or defer attribute set. Hmm. The script tags async attribute allows the browser to process the web page concurrently with OI. Oh, really? Oh my gosh. I have a pro. I have this issue with a website that I've created that uh, loads about, oh, okay, I better, I'm gonna, uh, excuse me. I'm gonna copy this. I have it be a reminder for later. Okay, so the async attribute allows the browser to process the web page concurrently with loading and processing the JavaScript. Okay, that's good. Uh, especially something if if like a lot of JavaScript or you know and you um, you don't you don't need to well anyway uh, and the defer attribute allows the browser to load a web page concurrently with loading the JavaScript but the JavaScript is not processed until the web page is completely loaded okay um, so. Okay, that, that's interesting. Okay, this this shows what happens with async. And the next one shows what happens with defer. Okay, so, so you can go through those and see what the difference is. A browser interprets the defer and async attributes for the script element the same. defer attribute indicates the browser should wait and interpret the JavaScript until after the HTML is completely loaded and processed. While async attribute indicates that the browser can process the HTML and the JavaScript concurrently. Using, when using third-party JavaScript library, defer attribute is usually better than the async attribute. Uh, now, I don't uh, instead of just trying to think of think of what the right answer is, I'm going to click on true, defer. No, I bet you this is false. 
So I'm going to say false. Third-party JavaScript library may assume that the DOM is already loaded. Thus, the defer attribute ensures that the DOM is loaded before the JavaScript. However, well-written like Okay, so uh, it should be true. So true means that, um, so defer is better. Defer is better than, um, than async. Okay, good. Uh, when writing a custom JavaScript, the defer attribute is usually better than the async. Um, I, I don't know, false. Correct. Custom JavaScript can take advantage of concurrent processing with HTML. As a result, the developer may see better performance using async um, instead of defer. <clears throat> okay, um, I'm gonna, um, is there a default? Um, HTML browser uh, JavaScript for async um, default. I want to see what the default is. Um, okay, it's not it's not evident here, but I but I would be curious to know what it usually is and when you don't specify it. Maybe it, that's a good experiment. All right. Um, most web pages on the internet were written before the defer or attribute standards were standardized. Okay, what am I going to say? Yes, correct. Many web pages do not use asynchronous or deferred execution. The load speed of the web pages could be improved using either. So we don't know. All right, minification and obfuscation. Okay, this is something that you can't do in the Python program because of Python because it would mess up the it would mess up uh, the identification of blocks and so on. So so that is this is an example. This you'll see is an example of enclosing program blocks like the if else if block or the 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 iterative portion of a while loop you know you enclose that in curly braces and then it doesn't matter they can be on the same line or not and you separate statements with a semicolon that as opposed to separating statements with a with a, a, a return and then having to tap um, I guess you could do this you know, I guess you could figure out some sort of minification with with um, with Python, but anyway, what that is is you go in there uh, and uh, you you change all the variable names to like one. Key. You start out with with you, you change all the variable names so it's like starts out with A and then B. So they're very small. You have very small variable names. You take out all the spaces. You put semicolons in there, and uh, it ends up looking something like this. Okay. Now you can take this and reformat reformatted as something that looks, you know, with indented blocks and so on. But um, you see this. Um, minified JavaScript is typically stored as uh, .min.js file extension. So um, a JavaScript obfuscator is software that converts JavaScript into, un into an unreadable form that is very difficult to convert back into readable JavaScript. Oh, I wonder what that would look like. So anyway, um, so use a right line method to display the inner height of the P tag. Use the inner height property of the window object, which contains Use right line method to display the inner height of a p of a p tag. Okay, so I wonder. I don't know what the answer to this is.
upset with the answers. Hmm. Window inner height. What is this? Method of the document object to display the inner height in a P tag of the web page. Okay, I th I thought this was asking you to display the inner height of the P tag. So in other words, you got a paragraph and it can paragraph can be like this many lines or this many lines, and you want to display the inner height of that paragraph tag. So I read this wrong. Make sure you read the problem correctly, especially when you're taking tests. All right. So anyway, that's the answer to that one. Let's let's um Let's, uh, let me hide this again. So window inner height. Oh, we're document right line. Do I need the, I guess I do need the document. Okay, so let's run this. This is the same question. So I can put uh, um, document right line. And then you gotta put Put the inner 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 um, height in in the so so I'll tell you what I'm going to do this and see if this works. Um, inner height equals window dot inner height document right line um, line equals p. Plus I H plus slash P and uh, I want to let's see if that is see if it says it's right. Oh, it does. That's great. All right. What's the next one? Add a script tag to the header that loads the JavaScript file that. So I guess it'd be something like, without the period, script uh, space, I guess it's source, SRC, is that where it is? I think it's, uh, I would guess. So that's right. Well, all right, uh, two. By the way, I already know that there's going to be more than one video on this chapter. There might be two more videos on this chapter. And I don't know, I, I, I've already promised to my other classes I'm going to do two videos for the next week. So maybe I'll just do one video next week and then two the next two the two the week after for this class. All right, document. Wait a minute, didn't we just? Okay, so here. Okay, so so here we're going to get get into the structure, and we're going to look at this uh, node representation of the document object model and a, a tree a tree visualization of the data structure. And uh, so there's a root node which is the top node. And there are children nodes, and there are uh, parent nodes, of course. So here's an example. Um, there are elements, which are squares. There are uh, text, which is circles around it. It's, it's an oval shape um, box. And then um, attribute mode is Another square, I guess. I shouldn't use color. Uh, so, so, he, so here's an example of how this is represented. Okay, so, okay, let's go down here. Let's look down. Okay, so.
Um, so let's say we have this web page here. It looks like this. Okay, it's got a it's there's the whole document here, and then there's a there's a title, and then there's a body. Now a title is always going to be inside of a head. So 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 even if you don't put the head tags, it's going to show up. The head tags are going to show up here. The head is going to show up here because the title is always in head. And uh, so then we have body, and then inside body we've got an ordered list. And then inside the ordered list, we have um, elements or, or, you know, line items or, you know, elements of the list. And, and really there's white space all over here too. There's white space, you know, uh, any return, any carriage return or whatever, new line is a, is a white space. So, um, so after the, there's white space and then there's the head and then there's the title inside of that and then and then this is the text olympic medals right here and then there's the the ending title tag let's see okay so there's uh there's more white space there's white space just before the body and uh and then there's um and then there's more white space Oops, this and then there's um the ol tag the OL tag, and then there's more white space, and then there's the LI tag, and there's text inside the LI, LI tag is gold. And then there's uh, more white space, another LI tag which says silver, and more white space, and another LI tag that says bronze, and so on. So um, this is looks like that. Which node is the root of the DOM tree? I guess it would be the uh, HTML one, yeah. Uh, which of the following DOM nodes is never a child tree? Is never a child node. I guess an attribute. Oh, wait a minute, an element. An element node, an attribute node. I think an attribute node. An attribute node, element attributes become attribute nodes. Attribute nodes are attached to the element and are not considered children. Oh, that's because, okay, for an href, the URL is an attribute. Oh, you no, know, for, for an A tag, an anchor tag, the href, um, href is an attribute, or you can think of it as a property of the, of the A tag. And this is a P, this is a P tag, and there's there's an ID, because I guess we're gonna have JavaScript refer to this P tag later. So so we give it a name. <coughs> <coughs> How many child nodes does the P element have? I think just one. Because it's a paragraph, so I'm gonna have one. That's one. Yeah. All right, so you can do that. <coughs> Which DOM node is missing from the HTML? The head, there's no head. So it's a DOM node, but it's you don't see it in the HTML. Is that right? Yes. Even though the HTML does not use a head tag, the browser automatically creates a head node. <clears throat> so, um, you know, when you're taking these, uh, these little participation things, it's okay if you just click to find the answer and then you read this stuff here because that's where you really learn and you also notice that it oftentimes asks you questions down here that aren't the answers are not up here and so you can do what i do you can search to a google search which i like to do because i like to find out everything about these things and i've got time um uh, or but better i mean just almost as good is just to click to see what to see what the right answers are and then you, you read what, what it says about them. Okay, so um, we were here viewing the DOM in Chrome. Uh, so um, Chrome Dev, Dev Tools can display HTML documents DOM by pressing that. So when we look at Chrome, mm -hmm. more tools. 
developer tools. This thing, elements, see elements. So look here, these are all the elements. It's better to, uh, can I copy this? No, is there some code I can copy? Copy this, okay, let's copy this. Copy, and let's open up, um, This and I'm gonna uh, get rid of this. So I'm just, oh no, I gotta get where's it? Go test.html. It's in ITS. Okay, so I'm gonna paste that there and I'm gonna save it. And I'm gonna use my Chrome and I'm gonna go to this. I'm gonna find my ITS 387P. ITS 387P. I have IT. I have that around someplace I thought I did. All right, let's do a different one. Desktop. ITS 387P on my desktop. Um, here, my test.html, test it's, it's already a, it already is gonna open up in Chrome. So let me just open it, a double click on it. And here it is. And this is what that HTML looks, looks like. And if we go here and more tools and developer tools, and we click on elements, we see it looks just like this. So if we view the source, let's view the source. We see there is no head, but when we look over here, there is a head. So it's smart enough to put that head in there for us. Is the OL, the LIs. So that's very interesting. I wonder what this marker thing is. All right. Getting close to the end. Um, so um, you you will want to reference um, uh, objects or whatever on on the screen or on, you know in the window. And here's how this is how you can get at them. Okay, um, this is this is my favorite way where you 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 um, give the element that you're going to want to access an ID, a unique ID, and then uh, you just use this, and then uh, and then by referring to that that element this way, you can do dot and then any kind of method or anything or any kind of property that that particular element has. So if it's a checkbox, then uh, document get element by ID dot checked is the property and checked is gonna be true or false depending on if the checkbox is checked or not. Um, and then you can get by tag name and if there's more than one with that tag name, it's gonna uh, you know bring back a, uh, an, an array of them, an array of them. And then of course you can reference, you know, um, you can reference each element in the array by an index. But if you're gonna start doing that, you might as well just give each element some sort of ID name. And um, if you're also using PHP or something to, uh, to generate the web page, uh, you can make the ID be some the result of some some evaluation, uh, you know, the result of some something in PHP. Have PHP generate the ID. <clears throat> I'll I'll show you that later. Okay, this this um, by class name, I guess this would be the a, cl uh, a class um, that's defined. 
in the CSS. And this is um, the uh, Matt, this select query uh, returns the array, array containing all the DOM nodes that match the CSS selector inside here. So it's this is going to match um, returns an array containing two anchor nodes in the HTML below. So uh, it's going to return this and this, I guess, or this returns the anchor level. Anyway, it's you, you can um, experiment with this and see exactly what these do. Uh, here's an example of returns uh, the LI node. About this is the first, looks like it's the first one, Fortran. That was the first, the first programming language that I actually got paid as a programmer when I was a when I was an undergraduate in college and I was a Fortran programmer. Lisp, I've written a little bit of Lisp too. That's an interesting language. All right. Um, okay, so it's uh, where, how far am I to finishing this? I, there's a lot to go here. So I'm gonna um, end this today and uh, continue next week. And I will try to go a little bit faster next week. We, we didn't get very far today, did we? So, um, all right, so are there any questions? Do you have any questions, Lay? Good. Okay, we will see you next week. Thanks. Thank you. Welcome.